Since the inception of the Wii, Nintendo has gone down a different design path with its consoles. Rather than wage a war of processing power with Microsoft and Sony, the company sought to fundamentally rethink hardware. The Nintendo Switch continues this out-of-the-box thinking with its hybrid form factor. After using it for a week, I'm glad to say that the hardware has a lot of potential and marks a strong return to form for the company. Like the Wii U gamepad before it, the Switch offers a 6.2-inch touchscreen. With the Joy-Con controllers attached, its 9.4x4.1x1-inch frame make it significantly smaller than the gamepad. While the dimensions of the display are the same, the Switch's screen looks far better. Its bright, glossy 1280x720p screen certainly isn't the sharpest panel on the market, but it offers a moderate 236.8 pixels per inch density. Above the touchscreen, the Switch houses its power button, volume rocker, exhaust vent, game card slot, and 3.5mm headphone jack. Under the device, there's a USB-C power port. On the back of the unit, there's a kickstand that you can pull out. This also reveals the micro SD card slot underneath. The kickstand itself only offers one angle, and it also feels a bit flimsy. I tested the neon red and blue Switch variant, and I have to say that the Joy-Cons look surprisingly bright and charming in person. It's easy to attach the Joy-Cons to the Switch. They generate a very satisfying snap when you slide them in place. Removing them requires a little more care, as you need to press down on a small button on the back of both controllers to release them. The left and right Joy-Cons are somewhat mirrored forms of each other. Both controllers offer face and directional buttons along with a joystick. The sticks themselves are pretty short and can't match the travel distance of Microsoft's solution, but they are much taller than the Nintendo DS's sticks and are serviceable. Whereas the Wii U gamepad looked and felt a bit like a Fisher-Price toy, the Switch feels sturdy overall. This is even more impressive when you consider that at 0.9 pounds with the Joy-Con controllers attached, the Switch is slightly lighter than the gamepad. Having spent several hours playing with the Switch on the go, I can say that it never felt uncomfortably heavy. The Switch is also more portable than I imagined. With the Joy-Cons attached, the device can fit into large pants pockets, though it will most likely jut out a little. The Switch is ideally suited for backpacks, but on some loose-fitting slacks, you can most likely get away with putting both Joy-Cons into one pocket and the console in the other. When you want to play the Switch on your TV, you'll need to insert it into the included Switch dock. Playing the Switch on the TV, you'll probably want to connect the Joy-Con controllers to the included grip peripheral, which feels surprisingly comfortable and ergonomic. Underneath the hood, the Switch uses a heavily customized NVIDIA Tegra system on a chip that's based on the ARM instruction set. In layman's terms, that basically means the console uses a souped-up tablet processor. Because the Switch is based on a mobile SoC, it's not a processing powerhouse. In The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, there are jaggies and occasional frame rate dips when the console is docked and rendering the game at 900p. It tends to dip when there's too much happening on the screen. Interestingly, I didn't notice the same performance issue when I played Zelda on the go. This is not to say that the Switch isn't capable of delivering beautiful graphics. Despite its occasional technical hiccups, Breath of the Wild is a beautiful game with lush colors and expansive vistas. It's far and away the most beautiful game I've ever seen rendered on a mobile processor. The Switch uses a tiny fan and it's super quiet. It never got obscenely hot either. The Switch's power efficient design is most likely why its temps are so moderate. The Switch comes with 32GB of storage. When you factor in operating system overhead, this leaves you with 25.9GB of usable space. That's not a lot, but the console does support expandable memory via micro SD cards up to 2TB. For its battery, the Switch uses a rechargeable 4310mAh lithium ion cell. This is a pretty big battery and it's more than double the size of an iPhone 7 solution. Nintendo claims that the Switch can last over 6 hours depending on usage. For Zelda, the company says users should expect around 3 hours of battery life. From my testing, this seems pretty accurate. The system sleep mode itself seems to be very power efficient. After a full charge, I took the switch out of the dock and set it aside for 5 hours. When I woke it up, it still reported a 100% charge. As it is right now, the operating system is very simple and bare bones. Currently, there is no video player. Nintendo said that video streaming applications are being considered for a future update. At the moment, the OS allows you to do simple things like calibrate your control sticks, test your internet connection, and go into airplane mode. The Nintendo Switch feels like the culmination of years of hardware growing pains from both NVIDIA and Nintendo. Unlike the Wii U gamepad, you no longer have to worry about being tethered to your TV. Because the Switch houses all of its processing power in its portable form factor, it truly allows you to carry console power with you wherever you go. The Switch isn't perfect, but it offers multiple ways to play games, all of which are viable. As silly as the commercials may seem, I can definitely see myself bringing the Switch to social gatherings as much as I can see myself playing Zelda sitting alone in front of my TV. You can find more powerful consoles like the PS4 and Xbox One on sale for cheaper than the $300 Switch, but you're paying for the form factor here. There's something special about being able to play Breath of the Wild on the big screen in the living room and then continue where you left off outside. Should you make the Switch? The answer should largely depend on whether you think the system's library of games will satisfy your needs. But Nintendo has undoubtedly laid the groundwork for a great gaming device.